Yeah, Caro and Robin, uh, also warm welcome from my side. Uh, I'm really excited and really honored to speak with you two today, two visionaries, two finance experts who are pushing digital transformation in the financial and the real estate sector. So uh, before we jump into our discussion and uh, find out more about how these two sectors actually belong together, and maybe to rise the suspense even a little bit more, I would like you both to tell us first a bit about FinLeap and Engel and Focus Capital. So, uh, Caro, uh, I think everyone knows FinLeap here, probably. Um, but uh, what, is the, what are the current developments and um, especially what is FinLeap's secret? How you actually manage to build such a large and innovative fintech ecosystem? So, first of all, thanks for having us. Uh, it's really exciting to be here. Uh, and I must say a big compliment to all the organizers to bring this conference together. I think this is a well done job. I really enjoy being here. <laughs> so, um, yes to you. Um, the, the secret sauce of Finleap. Um, I mean, when, when you look at us, it's always hard to describe what we really are. Uh, started five years ago as a company builder in the financial services sector have now 16 companies in the portfolio. By now we can say we're the largest fintech ecosystem in, in Europe. And um, what's the way forward for us, right? Because a lot of people um, trusted in us that we're truly changing this industry by, by developing a couple of solutions that help our partners uh, to become more competitive or launch um, from sketch new ventures that innovate certain parts of the financial services industry. So the way forward is to exactly stick to that strategy because it's successful. Um, and uh, we will build further ventures with a focus in Europe. And um, we, we do everything to grow our existing portfolio um, because as you all know, especially the ones in this industry, FinTech is kind of a marathon industry. It takes some time, especially for, on the, for the platforms, um, to, to develop them um, uh, to a significant revenue and, and size. Um, internationalization is something uh, that, is, that is on the map uh, for this year. We have an office in Milan with 25 people doing business for the portfolio, but actually building ventures as well. And uh, we're looking into different other markets. We have someone for Spain and soon someone for France. So this, this is exciting times for us. Um, what's the secret sauce? I think it's the, it's the true combination of, of the competencies that we bring together. I'm going to speak about that in a minute as well, um, which is this entrepreneurial attitude, right? So 60% of all Finley people, um, Finley in the portfolio, are entrepreneurs coming from all sorts of industries. You have the true industry experts that really understand the markets, regulations, what's going on, and uh, the technology know-how is really key and becomes even more important in these days to really make a difference. So this is something that, that, that truly is the signature of FINIP and always will be, um, and, and a, certain, a certain culture um, that, that drives us, right? That, so when, when we look at the FINIP values, so just the whole diversity is important to us. We have 46 different nationalities in the team. That's really important for us. Uh, we, we truly want to have an impact uh, in, in that industry. So the vision is a little bit, in a couple of years, when you look at the most successful financial services in, 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 in Europe, it should be anyway powered by FinLeap through our software solutions or throughout our, our products. So this is something we have in mind and, and, and this is what drives us every day. And that's why we so much love what we do. Uh, yeah, definitely sounds really interesting and really um, yeah, impressive development in the past years. So uh, Robin, uh, with Engel and Fölkers uh, Capital, uh, you're also driving innovation. Uh, you pushed crowd investing in real estate to the next level. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, uh, we founded um, Engel and Fölkers Capital already in 2009 and um, at the beginning as an issuing house for creating real estate funds using uh, the Engel and Fölkers brand. And then uh, some years after, we uh, decided to, to use uh, a digitalized business or uh, um, issues like crowd investing to, to um, let the brand grow in other um, ch value chains. And um, we started crowd investing uh, with a view of, okay, how can we use a brand, but how uh, should we um, avoid reputational risk? Because if you create a, 
um, a venture capital case, you, you must grow, grow, grow. And if you have a running business like Engel and Furkers um, did uh, roughly 20 billion euros a transaction last year, so uh, if you do 50 million euros crowd investing and 20 billion uh, euros uh, real estate, you have to look for, for reputation of the brand. And um, this is why we um, choose uh, Finleap as a partner for uh, the uh, digitalized um, businesses because we were uh, deeply impressed by their execution power and their um, understanding for regulated uh, business um, in this uh, mind. And um, in the crowd investing, for example, Every investment we do, uh, we finance it at the beginning. So any project we finance, we, we take it on our own book. We stick with 10% uh, of the investment. So the crowd knows that the investment is a quality um, investment. And the project uh, developer who, who gets uh, the money for the project uh, knows, OK, he will get the money even if the crowd won't, won't do it or won't work. Okay, so I think you already revealed a little bit that, that you chose Finleap as a partner. So it uh, sounds like you're planning a corporation there. Um, maybe you can uh, tell us, Carol, what is, um, what is this corporation actually looks like? Um, what is right. Finleap's part? And, um, right, yeah. right. So um, I think as the, as the title shows, we, we as Finleap, we truly believe that financial services is kind of an industry in the back. Right? And, and we truly think that in, 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 in future we'll probably use products, be it from banks or, or insurances or asset managers, in the context where we really need it. So this contextual banking is one thing that Solaris Bank, for example, enables many players to do. And, uh, and we truly believe in real estate. So when you think about the, the life cycle of, um, of a house, right, um, that, uh, that there are so many um, financial services aspects that need to be considered um, that, uh, that integrating financial services in the, in the life cycle of a real estate makes tons of sense. And I think we met uh, when, we, when we first decided to work together uh, when, you, when uh, Engel Focus invested into Element, um, right. our digital insurance company that is well like Solaris Bank and enable to, to offer digital insurance products um, at the point of sale or in a context like, like real estate. And by getting to know each other a little bit better through board meetings and many, many discussions, we found out that we think alike. Um, Engel Focus is a very, very entrepreneurial company as well, yep. uh, with a strong track record, a great brand, um, and is growing like hell uh, throughout the world, not only in Europe. Um, we thought there is a great fit, and, uh, and that's why we're cooperating now in a strategic way to think about new business models that we can create together along this life cycle of a, of a real estate. And if you look at, the, at Element, the first uh, investment we did uh, was like we just uh, uh, took a closer look to a real estate transaction. And if you sell a house or if you buy a property or whatever, you have always uh, one transaction point where you have to leave one property perhaps or if you, if you wait for to, to get um, the new property. And so you have um, always unsecured transaction points where you could perfect fit in an in, in, in insurance product, uh, which obviously not Engel and Volkers would deliver, but where you can use uh, a digital um, product or a brand to, to fit in, to get, as an example, guaranteed uh, Wi-Fi in your new um, apartment or whatever. So you already mentioned a couple of uh, use cases, um, but uh, I mean digital transformation in the real estate sector is probably just at the beginning, uh, where do you think is uh, the biggest need for digital transformation in real estate business? You want to start? I'll mm -hmm. add. Yeah, f from my point of view, there are there are two, or at a minimum two, two major issues. One uh, one thing is information uh, um, gaining and get uh, uh, transparent information. Um, as an example, we do a lot of asset management, and if you um, if you um, as an asset manager. Um, do an investment and, and buy a new um, apartment building, as an example, then um, today somebody will run through all these flats uh, with a clipboard and, uh, ah, okay, there is a, 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 a mark at, at the door or whatever, and uh, the next person takes this flipboard like, okay, in which apartment, at what door? So obviously there is a lot 
of transport of information, which, which could be very, very um, much better, and um, all the payment issues we see. So if you buy a house on Majorca, as an example, you have to just send your money to an, a Spanish bank. Or if you buy an, a flat in Milan, you have to send your money to, to an Italian bank. And, or to a lawyer you met twice, and um, I think some uh, German, uh, um, perhaps uh, real estate buyers or even international buyers would um, be happy to have a secured payment transaction because um, often uh, these are huge amounts of money and um, you won't send it to somebody who, who you met twice. Yeah. yeah, and there are tons of services uh, you need to to have, right? We just discussed about uh, alone the topic of, of mortgages, right? There's uh, so many services around this you need to take care of. Um, why can't you have it all in one place uh, that fit neatly together and reuse the documents all the time instead of sending it uh, across to people you don't know and you maybe don't know if you can trust them uh, because there's a lot of personal information you, you provide uh, to these financing banks, the real estate agents and so forth. So this is, this is an interesting question. Um, I think we, we discussed as well around the, the life cycle of a real estate. So um, I think there was um, a couple of, of weeks ago a nice article in Spiegel that we typically, when you choose a house, we don't look at that uh, in a detail like when we choose the kitchen for the house. So this, the life cycle costs attached to a house, and I bought one five years ago here in Berlin, and I truly can say the life cycle costs of a house are a lot higher than you typically would expect. I'm a banker. So this is something to understand that, yeah. right? And compare it with renting versus buying and what this actually would cost you over life cycle and how much you would need to earn to be able to finance it and some scenario analysis about what this thing needs to be worth in a couple of years to justify all these investments. Yep. These are all things that, that you should know, um, no matter if you're like a, 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 like a professional investor in real estate, yep. more unlike an institutional investor, or especially a private investor um, that uh, where you rent out or you use it for yourself. So um, there, there are plenty of things you, you can combine that are, and I think this is a difference now um, that, that, that we want to achieve. So always thought from the customer perspective. So not so much from a bank's perspective that wants to sell more mortgages or the real estate agent that wants to sell more houses. You need to come from the customer perspective and then spin this whole life cycle around a house, a flat for this person in a way so that you can, from the tonality, understand, right, and get recommendations how to cover, how to do the transactions, how to do the payment, how to do the financing, and all the services attached yeah. to it. And brokerage business today is very old-fashioned, like um, you have um, many multi-locational um, uh, living uh, uh, scenes or where you just won't buy or, or, or uh, where you won't keep the house of your parents or uh, the house of your grandparents or whatever, so uh, there is a transformation going on in this old business as well and we will just uh, take a closer look to the brokerage business how we can use the transaction numbers we do there use the information we get and how we could fit some digital satellites around it to to um, gain more out of the value chain okay well i can definitely see why this corporation makes a lot of sense and i think you got everyone in this room here really curious now to find out a little bit more and so maybe you can tell us um, what are you going to do, what are your next steps uh, in the next uh, month, maybe what can we expect to read in the news? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what I think, it, 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 as you said, I think that the reason why we're, why we're working together because we bring the, the, like our domain expertise together, right? Yeah. So we as Finney, we can't say we're real estate experts you are and the whole team is, right? On the other hand, when you look into new business models, it's not your first thinking around having this design thinking approach, thinking about the customer pain points first and deriving to innovative solutions. So these two sides are now brought together, so we're in the middle of it, uh, evaluating different ideas, so ideation process, testing it with customers and see with what we want to launch. I think we described a little bit the vision, yeah. how it can look like. The question is, how do you actually start 
what to offer first, right? To make the customer curious, to engage, to come back, to use the next service with you, to create that trust so that you get the data. Um, do you, I don't know, yeah, right? You show the value of the existing uh, real estate and, and then come up with recommendations, hyper relevant, that fit to the situation of the customer. So this is the, the stuff we're, we're currently developing together. And I must say, it, must, it makes just a lot of fun, right? Because it's a, um, in comparison to many, I say that now, banks and insurers we're working with, uh, where it's mostly about selling products, right? More products, how can we sell more products and more customer touch points? Here's really about something that is emotionally driven, mm -hmm. right? Because when you look into your account and see the categorization of your expenditure, if you use these wonderful PFMs, right, that everyone's selling, um, then you see that the largest amount you're spending is typically the flat or the house you're owning. So where we actually don't really take care of it in a, in a good way. So this is something that makes a lot of fun and the customers we talk to find it highly relevant. And so now it's about how do we actually go into that market. We have a couple of deals. Uh, you, you mentioned the payment. Um, there, are, there are plenty of things in the Finley portfolio that we can right away use. I mean, this is another, another good reason maybe why we, where we work together. We don't have to build everything from scratch again, right? So we have, we have a bank that can offer us accounts or or, or cards and, and, and loans. Uh, we have an insurance um, where we can we, we we have a couple of products that we can right away use or even tailor to a specific target group. Um, I mean, Engel Fergus, as you all know, um, they have great real estate in their portfolio. <laughs> Not all of us <laughs> can afford it. Um, people might have really luxurious things in those houses, so you, you need to make sure that they are protected. So yeah. to come up with a very exclusive insurance product that is especially targeted to that audience, these are all ideas we're currently, uh, we're currently discussing and, and seeing with what we're gonna, we're gonna launch. So stay tuned yeah. on that one. <laughs> and you have some, some regulatory issues from uh, Crowd investing, as an example, we just financed to, um, until today a uh, German property. We will start financing uh, Spanish or, or uh, properties uh, at the Balearic Islands and um, do this uh, cross-border. So uh, we are thinking about establishing a an, an Spanish uh, crowdfunding platform uh, so that Spanish investors could invest in Germany as well so that we use uh, the, uh, the brand in the different countries um, and uh, Spain, as an example, um, uh, England Fergus has in Spain roughly two and a half thousand people uh, working, and um, in Madrid and Barcelona, uh, each uh, roughly 400 uh, in the office. So you have a good traction in these uh, cities, which we could use for our own business models and for corporations with uh, with company builders like like uh, Finley. Right, definitely sounds really interesting. Um, so as you have an audience here full of experts and uh, decision makers from the banking and insurance industry, is there anything that you are looking for for your joint project, like investors, partners, talents? I mean, like <laughs> always, the scarcest resource are talents. So if anyone finds that really intriguing what we're trying to achieve here as a vision, uh, let us know. So we're looking for everything right now. Um, like, like always, when, when Finleap starts a new business, we, we use the Finleap experts to, to build the first solution, the first MVP over the first six months. And then we hire the founding team and the permanent team um, um, for this specific business. So if everyone feels uh, attracted to it, let us know. You're going to find us on LinkedIn. And, uh, and uh, we would love to talk to you. All right. Um, well, as we have one more minute left, okay. and it's also for me, like always, um, a topic for my heart. Uh, um, Monica said in the beginning that you uh, founded FinTech, Women in FinTech, yeah. and also empowering a woman uh, in the finance industry. So maybe there are some here. Um, you can tell how yeah. we can support or how, how we can uh, join. Absolutely. Or yeah, so the whole idea, I mean, started three years ago and I'm doing it with uh, Solve and Ina. Thanks for coming today. And um, so what, what we're trying to achieve is to have a very special network here. It is Europe-wide and uh, we're bringing together women from uh, banks, insurers and asset managers, top level, um, that dedicate their time on digitization. And on the other hand, we have female founders of fintechs and insurtechs throughout Europe. 
we bring them together in very nice intimate dinners mostly and, and have very good talks, networks. Um, we support each other. I always have a list of topic experts, female topic experts, so anyone planning conferences. I have the list of the female experts, right? So we're not only having these uh, only male good-looking <laughs> uh, uh, people on stage, uh, but some female as well. So that's an idea. We're trying to promote young talents as well. That's why we last year um, organized and hosted our first female-only hackathon. Um, that was really great because we, we locked up our 50 women um, with a task to come up with a business model that would actually um, help us women to take care of our finances. Because next to the women in finance on top level, what really intrigues my heart even more is that we're so bad in actually taking care of being independent, and uh, especially money-wise. So this is something else uh, we're driving uh, in, in, in FinLeap and, and with this network. So um, everyone interested in that, in that network and, and feeling addressed and attracted to it, please um, visit uh, us on the FinTech Women site, uh, or we were also in LinkedIn and Twitter, probably everywhere. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Thanks. Sounds Glad like to, to give, a, give a call to you. Great initiative. Thank you. Well, unfortunately, our time is already up. I would love to talk more with you about this new corporation. But uh, yes, thank you too so much for sharing your future plans. Um, and also, yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing even more about it in the near future. And um, yes, uh, Caro unfortunately has to, to leave right away, uh, but you can contact her on LinkedIn or the, her contacts on the Finley page if you have any questions. You will stay another half an hour, you yep. said, so if you have any questions to Robin, now is your chance. And yes, thank you so much for sharing. I think it was really interesting. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you.